Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we are talking about uh, how to find the velocity of UAV, right? So, so we derived that if you know the differential pressure, that is, if you can measure the total pressure, static pressure, and if you know the density, you will be able to find the velocity. So we measure this total pressure, right? with the help of pitot tube and static pressure with the help of static tube, static pitot tubes and corresponding sensor, pressure sensor, static tube, right, connected to a pressure sensor, static pressure measured with the help of static tube connected to sensor, pressure sensor. And to know the uh, density at that particular altitude, uh, right, we derived standard atmosphere, equations for standard atmosphere. So. Uh, where we observed there are some altitudes at which like the temperature changes with altitude and the pressure and density also changes with. And standard atmosphere is a plot that represents the variation of this temperature with altitude, right? So let us limit ourselves right now to the first two layers. This is a gradient layer. the slope A is equal to minus 6.5 Kelvin per kilometer, right? So this gradient layer extends up to 11 kilometers altitude. And this is the sea level, this is the temperature variation. And the sea level temperature is 288.16 Kelvin, right? And up from 11 to 25 kilometers, it is observed that the temperature almost remains constant. And the corresponding layer is termed as isothermal layer. Right? So at 11 kilometers, we observe it is 216.66 Kelvin. Right? Yes. So to find out the temperature, pressure, and density at different altitudes, we have derived for gradient layer we can use these equations or relationships. Here minus one. So these two relationships stands for gradient layer where if you know the altitude, you can find the corresponding temperature at that particular altitude by the definition of this lapse rate, which is dt by dh. This equals to T2 minus T1 is equals to A into H2 minus H1. T2 is equals to T1 plus A into H2 minus H1. Right? If you know the altitude of your flight, 
you will be able to find out the corresponding temperature here. Right? So using this temperature and the sea level temperature and you know the sea level density, you will be able to find out the density at the required altitude as well as the pressure at the required altitude. So what are these STP conditions? Standard temperature pressure, P at sea level, right, at STP or sea level, you have P is 1 atmosphere, which is 1.01325 into 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. At STP, we have density is equals to 1.225 kg per meter cube and temperature is 288.16 Kelvin. And the R that we are using here is universal gas constant, which is 287 joule per kg Kelvin, right? And G naught is 9.81 meter per second square. Okay. Now, yesterday we solved few few uh, few examples, right? In which we assume that the dense altitude is known, altitude is given, and the corresponding velocity is obtained, right? By means of the measured either pitot pressure or the static pressure. Now, but who is giving this information about your altitude? How do you know at what height your UAV is flying? So in our previous examples, we considered altitude is given, right? But how do you know who is going to give that? Oh, let us take some examples so to address this, right? Example 3, if I am not wrong. Consider the differential pressure. measured by the pressure sensors sensor so in some cases we can also have differential pressure sensors right instead of measuring separate pressure, pressure separately from pitot tube and static tube what you can do is you can connect to a differential pressure sensor, right? One can be P naught, the other can be PS. So you can have a pitot tube you can connect pitot to pitot tube for uh, to this uh, total pressure port and then you can have a static tube at the same time. Yes. So you will get PS from here, P not from here. Right? So you can use a differential pressure sensor directly. So this Pressure, this differential pressure is measured by this differential pressure sensor. Right. Instead, the different is of a UAV. Cruising at thirty meters per second is f 
फोर जीरो नाइन फोर जीरो नाइन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव फास्ट किल राइट फाइंड द करस्पोंडिंग आल्टीट्यूड ऑफ फ्लाइट right the question is clear here we have p not minus ps is equals to 409.05 you have velocity cruise velocity is 30 meters per second now you need to find what is the altitude at which you are flying so let us constrain ourselves like all the examples that we are going to solve is for the gradient layer till 11 kilometers right so even commercial aircrafts fly till 11 kilometers <coughs> now we have v infinity is equals to square root of 2 times P not minus P S one, row, right? And say if I want to find out H, right? Either I need I need to know what is the density at that altitude or the pressure at that altitude, static pressure at that altitude, right? So let us see what we can find from this given data. Rho is equals to P not minus P S divided by R V infinity square, right? From here, I can get what is the density, because the P not minus P S is four zero nine point zero five twice divided by nine hundred. Point nine zero nine. Yes, almost like. 0.909 kg per meter cube. Now I know density at the height h, right? Or say, let it be the density at our altitude, right? It's a it's at the corresponding altitude of flight. Now using this relationship, what we have is t2 by t1 is equals to rho2 by rho1. One by minus g naught by a r minus one, right? T t is equals to t one times. What is rho two? Is point nine zero nine and one point two two five kg per meter cube. So rho one is here. Uh, Sea level density and T one is the sea level temperature. Minus nine point eight one divided by minus zero point zero zero six five into two eighty seven minus one. So what we have T two is equals to two eighty eight point one six what we get from here is two sixty eight point two sixty eight point six two four Kelvin. Right? You know T two by using the definition of lapse rate. You can find what is the h. Since you have d d t, you can find d h. Right. So using the definition, a a is equals to d t by d h. Right. D h is equals to d t by a. That is equals to two eighty eight point one six. 
minus 268.624 divided by minus 0 0.0064. This is minus of minus T2 minus T1. This is T, T1 and T2, right? This equals to which is approximately 3 kilometers. This is H2 minus H1, which is H, right? Because H1 is 0 here, sea level condition. Now, you got geopotential altitude as 3 kilometers, right? Now, you have to convert this 3 kilometers to geometric altitude. We have h is equals to r into h g by r plus h g. Right. This implies h g is equals to r into h divided by r minus h. Right. So, r here is approximately 6400 kilometers radius of earth. r is the radius of earth here. So, H G turns out to be 2.9985 kilometers. So, the difference is hardly 1.5 meters. difference between geometric altitude and geopotential altitude. Assuming that there is no onboard GPS with which you can, I mean that is one source where you can get the altitude of flight, right. Assuming that there is no onboard GPS, now with the absolute pressure whatever you are going to measure, right, how to find out the corresponding altitude. So, this problem will address that situation, right. So, let us take another example. The static pressure sensor measures the pressure, pressure sensor of a UAV. pressure of 53.75 kilo pascals. Find the altitude of flight of this unit. So, what you have here is P s a static pressure or P at a particular altitude h right is equals to 50, 53.75 kilo pascals ok. Now, we need to find out the corresponding altitude of flight. So, we can use this relationship P h by P c level right P 1 let us say is equals to P at that altitude by P at sea level 
raised to the power of minus g naught by a r right this is t at that altitude by 288.16 is equals to 53.75 kilo pascals divided by 1.01325 kilo pascals raised to the power of minus 9.81 divided by minus 0 0.0065 into 287. Now, the temperature at this altitude is equals to two fifty five point six six Kelvin. Right. So, we we know from the definition of lapse rate again A is equal to dh by dt by dh. Right. We have d t2 is equals to t2 minus t1 is equals to t2 by a is equals to dh. Right. That is h2 minus h, h is equals to h. Two fifty five point six six minus two eighty eight point one six divided by minus six point five into ten four minus three. Which is equals to five kilo. Right. So, and the corresponding Hg is 4.996 kilometers. Right. Right. And the corresponding geometric altitude is approximately 4.996 kilometers. So, what we have done here uh, in the question, it is mentioned we have a static pressure data from the sensor which is about 53.75 kilopascals. By using this static pressure, we found the corresponding temperature at that altitude, right, by using gradient layer equation. And with the, by, and by, with the help of definition of this lapse rate, we are able to find out the corresponding altitude of flight. And this geopotential altitude turned out to be 5 kilometers. And, we, and with the help of the relationship between geopotential altitude and the geometric altitude, we figured out geometric altitude to be 4.996 kilometers. Now, let us look at an aircraft. Let us say this is my UAV, which I am interested in. Okay. Yeah, fine. So, why do this aircraft fly? One simple answer can be, there is some force which is opposing this weight, right? Let us term this force as lift, right? And how lift is generated? Since we are talking about a fixed wing UAV, we need to move this aircraft at a required velocity. Who is moving this aircraft? Thrust is the force that is helping the aircraft to move at the required velocity, right? And there is some penalty at the same time for generating lift as well as since we are moving in a fluid, right, there can be friction. So, because of which there is a opposing force called drag. These are the four forces that we need to study here, right? First to understand before design, start designing it. Now, who is generating lift? 
No, let us look at the anatomy of the aircraft, right. So, let us assume this as an aircraft, right. So, you have some of the major components are wing, horizontal stabilizer or tail. vertical stabilizer. Or vertical tail, right. And we have a propulsion system, the engine. Here it will be on either side, right. You can have a single engine as well in some of the aircrafts. So, you have fuselage. and then under carriage, right. Now, major components which are fixed, let us say for a conventional aircraft, what are the fixed components and what are the moving components, right. So, fixed is like you have wing, you have horizontal tail, You have a vertical tail, fuselage, right. So, we also have some moving components, right. So, why do we need them to control the orientation of this aircraft? So, hence these moving components are also known as control surfaces. Some of these moving components are all are known as control surfaces, right. So, we have something on elevator as well as, so we have something on horizontal tail called elevator. It is a moving surface, right, which helps to control the nose up and nose down motion, right. And there is a moving component on this vertical tail called rudder. which helps you to turn left and right, right. And there are control surfaces on wing as well, ailerons which helps you to roll, right. Most, uh, the, so, we need to mention various motions that are possible with an aircraft, right. It is worth mentioning here. 
right? So aircraft is considering it as a rigid body, right? And rigid body in space have six degrees of motion, right? What it can do, it can move, it can translate. So it total have six degrees of freedom. Freedom. Three translational. Three rotational. Right. So this rotational or the orientation of this aircraft are controlled by this control surfaces. Right. Can be controlled by this control surface. So assuming this as the CG of the system and be the coordinate uh, origin of this coordinate frame whatever I am considering now. Right. Let us consider a right handed coordinate system right? where x cross y is z here. So the translation along x, along y, along z are the I mean, it can uh, other three degrees of freedom, right? Linear translation, and then there is an angular rotation possible here. So let us start with x-axis. The rotation about x-axis is known as roll, right? What is the positive roll now? We have to define the convention also, right? So let's for fo it follows the right-hand thumb rule. Stretch your thumb along the positive x-axis. The curl of your fingers will give you the positive rotation about the respective axis. Now, the positive roll will be, this is the right wing, say, starboard and the left wing or port side, right? So right wing going down is a positive roll, right? So you have roll, right? Similarly, and this roll is controlled by this ailerons, right? You can control the rolling motion by deflecting the corresponding control surfaces called ailerons here, right? And what about rotation about y-axis? Known as pitch, right? Pitch. So the positive pitch will be nose up. If the nose is going up, it is a positive rotation about y-axis. If the nose is going down, it's a negative rotation about y axis. Similarly, you have yo, right? If the right wing coming back, it is a positive yo. Yeah. So pitch rotation about y axis can be controlled by elevator. We'll see how we can do that at a later stage, right? At the same time, yo can be obtained by means of rudder deflection, right. okay. So the moving surfaces we have with wing is aileron for control and you have flaps or high lift devices. which are used to enhance the lift, right? We, we saw that lift is essential. We nomenclature just now, a force that opposes the weight, right? So lift, so we need to have, uh, we need to enhance, if you want to enhance the lift at a lower velocities, we need to operate this flaps, right? And you have flaps. At the same time, you also have spoilers, which can sometimes be used as a control surface as well. You also have spoilers. So the basic aim of this spoiler is to reduce the lift, disturb the flow, yeah, and increase the drag. Okay. And how about the horizontal tail? What do you have? Is a elevator. It can be a split elevator as well, right? You can have four such 
split elevators to have the differential uh, control right there. And you have vertical tail for and the corresponding control surface is known as rudder. Right. So, how to control the speed? So, one variable that we have here, one control that we have is by varying the thrust. Right. So, thrust is often considered as a control input. Okay. Right. So, we just know so wing is one of the major component right of this aircraft. Right. Let us cut this wing. Let us say this is your some a center line or fuselage reference line whatever right let us say this is your wing right what happens if i cut this wing you will often find profile similar to this This profile is known as airfoil, which is a 2D wing or infinite wing. <coughs> 2D wing or infinite. Okay. So this airfoil is responsible for generation of lift. How efficient you? I mean. Uh, how efficient the lift will be like so you can there are many ways to generate you can also use a flat plate right so this shape speaks a lot how uh, about how efficiently you can generate the lift right so let us look at the nomenclature of this aerofoil first so let us consider an arc or a line like this right let us say this is let us nomenclature it as mean camber line. So what is this mean camber line? Right? Now, if I want to draw a draw an aerofoil with the help of this mean camber line, what should I do? No? No, I can build the entire aerofoil with the help of this mean, mean camber line. Right? So, let us say I know the thickness distribution at each and every point. Thickness is measured perpendicular to the mean camber line right, at that particular point. Right. Now, say if I have a series of points, because if I vary the points along this camber line, I will get the thickness distribution. Let us say if I have that information, I right, will be able to plot upper and lower boundaries. Right. These upper and lower boundaries are my upper and upper surface and lower surface of aerofoil, right? And now, obviously, since this thickness is a distance measured, right, from the upper surface to the lower surface, perpendicular to the mean camber line, right? So here, the thickness distribution is symmetric about this mean camber line right you understand so this mean camber line will be the midpoints of midpoints of the thickness at that particular location right so mean camber line can be defined as locus of midpoints of thickness of an aerofoil right 
So it's a locus of thick midpoints of thickness. And you have upper surface and lower surface here, and you have thickness, which is the distance between upper surface and lower surface, which is measured perpendicular to this mean camber line. And the starting point of this mean camber line is a leading edge. camber line or camber line right mcl and the aft point of this mean camber line is trailing edge A straight line joining this leading edge and the trailing edge is known as chord line. This is my chord. straight line joining leading edge and trailing edge right now comes the camber the distance between this mean camber line and chord, chord line is known as camber Now say if the camber is 0, what happens? What is camber 0? When the mean camber line coincides with this chord line. So in that case, the thickness distribution will be symmetric about chord line. So when there is camber, the thickness distribution is always symmetric about mean camber line, but it is not symmetric about this chord line right? when there is a camber. But when camber is 0, the thickness distribution is symmetric. So it's like the upper surface is a mirror image of bottom surface about the chord line. right? So in that case, this is how an aerofoil look like. This is your chord line and this is your mean camber line both coincides with each other right so and you have equal thickness distribution these two are equal right? this is your leading edge this is your trailing edge right this particular airfoil is known as symmetric symmetric aerofoil. So this aerofoil is known as cambered aerofoil because it has a camber. Cambered aerofoil. Right? So if this camber is above the chord line, 
then it is known as postulic cambered aerofoil. Right? If this camber is below the cord line, then it is known as negatively cambered aerofoil. So you have two such aerofoils known as positively cambered. and negative camber. Negative camber, positive camber and negative camber aerofoils, right. If I make a wing out of this symmetric aerofoil, I have a symmetric wing and if I make a wing out of this cambered aerofoil, I will have a cambered wing, right. So let, let us see how to plot an aerofoil. Ultimately, what do you require? You require upper surface and lower surface, that is it, right? And something called leading edge radius, right? So this curvature, which is tangent to the upper and lower surface, right, is known as leading edge. The radius, if you draw a circle with a radius such that this circle becomes tangent to the upper and lower surface, right? So that radius is known as leading edge radius. We call this as leading edge radius. Okay. Now, how can I plot this airfoil? When I say plot here, I need the coordinates of upper and lower surface. How can I plot it? or say how an aerofoil software works. Say if you want to design a new aerofoil, what all you need to do? Right, you have to start it. So the information that I require is, you can see the camber is varying with respect to the mean camber line, is varying as the chord varies, right. Let us say you have a chord here, at each and every location of this chord, this there is a there are corresponding coordinates for this mean camber line, right. Say if I have the coordinates of mean camber line, say this is, let us say C is my mean camber line, YC as a function of chord or say X, right. this is my y axis and this is my x axis, right. Now let us assume the chord is along this x axis. So let us consider my chord is along this x axis, right. And if I know the equation of this mean camber line, right. And if I have an equation that talks about the distribution of thickness at each and every x, at each and every x, if I have the corresponding thickness distribution about y, about mean camber line, okay. And if I know the slope at each and every point of this mean camber line, I will be able to draw the plot this aerofoil, right. What do, what do I require here? Let us say this is my chord, no. Chord of this aerofoil as well, okay. Now for different locations of chord, what I require is 
what will be my y of camber line at that corresponding x right y of y of thickness at that corresponding x and theta of the camber line theta of the camber line at that x if i have this information then i'll be able to figure out what is the corresponding upper and lower surface right coordinates of upper and lower surface so let us see how No, let us consider a point on the x-axis, uh, on the like. Let us consider a point on the chord, right? And the corresponding, let x on the chord, right? Now, what will be the corresponding point on the camber line? From this, you you will get to know what is the corresponding point on the camber line. right so this is my corresponding coordinate of the camber line now i know the slope here because theta of the camber line at that particular x i know right if i draw a tangent right theta of c is equals to dy c by dx right if i draw a tangent at this point so now thickness is perpendicular right thickness is measured perpendicular to this mean camber line so if i have to draw the thickness i need to know what are the my no what is my if i have to draw perpendicular i need to know what is the reference here right the reference here is the tangent right so perpendicular to this tangent i have this y of t see although this need to be more closer so that it looks symmetric right so consider this is a symmetric understand symmetric thickness distribution although it doesn't look like but please consider this right now you have this this as y of t and the same y of t you have it, you have it here now what are this coordinates then so if i draw a local horizontal here which is parallel to this right say this is my white line which is parallel to this so this is parallel right so this perpendicular component so this two will be perpendicular and the corresponding angle will be theta here right this angle will be equal to this angle whatever i have right and y of t if i have a cos component of it right you will get this height and you know this height right so this is let us say this point is y of c comma x of c right this height is this particular height i have here is y of c this is x of c so i get this y of c from here for a particular x i know what is my y y of the mean camber line right now the point a say and there is point b where i have x a y a and x b y b right so x a is equals to that i know this total distance if i know this distance say this is my x a this is my x a right if i know this distance if i subtract this otherwise to get this xa if i know this distance and if i subtract this distance right i know what is xc if i subtract this horizontal distance right i will get to know what is my xa so xa is equals to xc minus yt sin theta of c at that particular x yt at that particular x right 
वॉट इज वाई एट पॉइंट ये इस वाई टी सॉरी वाई सी दिस वाई सी दिस इज हॉरिजेंटल राइट सो पैरल टू दिस लाइन दिस डिस्टेंस प्लस दिस डिस्टेंस दिस इज अगेन परपेंडिकुलर टू दिस लाइन राइट सो दिस टोटल डिस्टेंस विल बी दिस इज वाई वाई ए राइट विच इज समीशन ऑफ वाई सी प्लस दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्टेंस सो वाई सी प्लस वाई टी ऑफ कॉस थीटा ऑफ सी एट दैट पर्टिकुलर एक्स राइट सिमिलरली वॉट इज एक्स बी so this distance plus this distance right x a plus y t of x into sin theta of c at that x and similarly y y b y c minus y t to cos of theta of c at that particular x okay got it right now if you look at this see yc is how much yc is this much uh, yt is this much like yt cos component is this much here y yt is this much and y yb is this much i don't know what so so okay from here right i need to get to know what is the coordinate from here because i am calculating this entire length i know this length if i know have to if i want to know this length with respect to this core then i have to subtract here right so what happens is this becomes a negative quantity that's why you have negative axis negative y axis here Here it's a negative y-axis. Okay. So assuming the chord line is your x-axis, then you will get the negative y-axis, y-coordinate there. Right. So you have x a y a and x b y b. So for e at each and every point, you can. So if you yeah, you can uh, find out the corresponding upper and lower surface coordinates for a given, for a given chord, right? Or for a given point on the chord. Are we done? What about leading edge radius? So consider this is my leading edge. You know the slope at that particular point. Draw a tangent, right? Draw a tangent to this mean camber line at that particular point with the slope equal to the slope at that particular chord chord location, right? now measure the radius along this chord line and draw a circle by using that point as a center although it is not exactly the same draw a circle so which that should become tangent to the upper and lower surface right so this becomes the leading edge radius okay so to define the airfoil what we need is camber uh, equation of camber mean camber line or camber line and equation for thickness distribution as a function of chord right and theta or the slope of this camber line as a function of chord and the leading edge radius say z rho prime right rho prime is your leading edge radius okay